This is Tech Stop Public Information Officer Josh Donay here on Loop 1604. I'm near Calabria Road, and you see a couple of trucks right here in front of me. Uh, pedestrian walking across the way. Be careful while you're doing that, by the way. The pedestrian access out here is extremely limited. Um, these uh, trucks out here are actually helping uh, with asphalt operations. This is uh, you're looking at the southbound frontage road, or what has been called Leslie Road. Uh, approaching uh, Calabria Road. And you're going to see here, as I uh, look around here, make sure that I've got no vehicles coming at me here. Um, the uh, Williams Brothers Construction is busy paving the southbound entrance ramp uh, from Shanefield. Uh, this is the ramp that you would use if you're coming from Shanefield or from any of the businesses or neighborhoods there. Uh, between Shane Field and here. We're going to have to throw on the windshield wipers a little bit here. But anyway, um, this entrance ramp will essentially let you bypass that Calabria Road intersection. I'm going to get over here and take a look at it for a moment uh, while uh, let others come through. And you can see that uh, right here on your left, you can see uh, there's a little bit of a lip there where we've got a little bit of asphalt down. Now, it's raining a little bit. Uh, obviously, the windshield wipers are running which means we've got to take some extra special care about the way we're laying this asphalt. It's a light rain right now, so we're not getting too much of an issue, but as it uh, starts to pick up, as it will throughout the day, may have to stop paving uh, for today and, and uh, pick it up when it dries again because uh, wet asphalt is bad asphalt. But uh, this is that uh, nor that southbound entrance ramp that uh, you know will carry us over onto the, the main lanes of 1604 headed towards uh, sea world 151 wiseman uh you know what have you uh if you're coming from shanefield road the other thing that's really nice about this by the way is as you're headed southbound 1604 if i'm coming from shanefield or you know from the wild horse uh, subdivision bridgewood uh, any of those uh, subdivisions along shanefield galm road um this uh this entrance ramp will get me onto the main lanes of 1604 and then uh, using the current 151 exit ramp, which will basically be the same thing for the exit ramp southbound 1604 to uh, west, eastbound 151. This will allow me to get onto that direct connector that Williams Brothers is busy building uh, there on uh, 1604 151 uh, to be able to head east uh, in towards downtown and 410 and whatnot. So, anyway, just uh, show any one of the big developments that's going on. Of course, asphalt and, and paving is kind of the name of the game right now as we uh, take a look at a couple of things. Going to drive around a little bit and we're going to uh, show you four or five little tiny things as we go. But as you see here, we have road crews uh, working on this southbound frontage road uh, here, um, you know, busy grading things out, trying to get everything ready for asphalt from top to bottom. The reason that they're working so hard at this, and you're going to see a lot of this operation pick up, um, is uh, their Williams Brothers Construction is looking to shift all traffic of 1604 onto this frontage road June 27th. Okay, so mark that on your calendar. That's their target date. Now, the weather that we've been getting may make it so that's prohibitive. Um, but June 27th is the date they've got circled on their calendar. You ought to have it circled on yours as the day that we're going to shift all 1604 traffic between, uh, well, Braun and, uh, and uh, Calabria uh, onto the frontage roads of 1604 and off of the main lanes. That will allow them to do work on the main lanes and, uh, and, and get, uh, uh, get on with those overpasses that they're building. Now look at what some of this is going to look like uh, right here on the northbound side. Just took the turnaround under Calabria Road. Um, a look at what some of this will look like here uh, as uh, the the um, northbound frontage road has already kind of been constructed for a little bit here between Calabria and Shanefield at least. Um, this area, you see that on-ramp right there that we're passing. I'm going to get over here into our work area away from the traffic. But uh, this entrance ramp here on your left has been uh, shut down. And if you look up here, I'll drive up to it a little bit. But if you look up here, um, this uh, we've actually cut through it. And you'll see that, that uh, it's been cut at a very nice angle right here. And that's because this is uh, the northbound exit ramp now, or it will be, um, 
to Shanefield. Uh, so if you're headed northbound 1604 from, say, 151, Wiseman, what have you, uh, this is the exit ramp that will get you to Shanefield. And uh, the, the entrance ramp uh, for northbound uh, 1604 coming from Calabria is going to be up closer to where a temporary ramp currently is. So let's take you up there and we'll take a look at that. All right, now we're on the uh, northbound frontage road um, right here before Shane Field and looking at this entrance ramp. This is a temporary ramp, by the way. This is not the permanent uh, entrance ramp for northbound 1604 uh, from Calabria. So uh, just know that this is not where everything will be. We're using this right now as a detour uh, route for uh, traffic um, as we're building the uh, the northbound exit ramp that we just got done looking at uh, right there, that northbound exit ramp to Shane Field. So <coughs> um, one of the things, I just wanted to show you here what why we're, we're looking at this and, and one thing that I think is interesting. Um, this ramp right here, of course, dumps onto the northbound main lanes right there before you get to the uh, turnaround uh, signals of Shane Field and whatnot. And we've had a few uh, folks call in saying that they feel like this is uh, not the safest uh, maneuver because they'll, you know, get on, they'll use this entrance ramp, and then try to get over uh, two, three lanes of traffic to turn left on Shane Field. Um, this thing right here is called a portable changeable message board. Um, zooming in on it a little bit. And if you look, I don't know if that, if you can see what that message says, very well, so I'll read it. It says S field, that means Shane field, westbound, that's turning left essentially, use turnaround. So this is us saying that we actually don't want you to be trying to move over several lanes of traffic so that you can uh, turn left at Shane field. What we want you to do is actually go up and use the turnaround uh, north of Shane field. And you know, I've got a clear space of traffic here uh, behind me, so I'm going to actually jump onto this ramp myself and show you exactly what you what we mean uh, so that there's no confusion. Again, um, we don't want you getting on uh, onto these main lanes and then uh, uh, just running over as, as hard as you can. In fact, if you look right here as we're heading north, these are solid white lines which are kind of there to keep you from trying to jump over several lanes and uh, you know, they're deliberately placed so uh, such that you're not going to be uh, jumping over three lanes to get over into those left turn lanes. We don't want you doing that. Um, so here uh, we've got a green, so I'll show you what we do want you doing. Okay, and you'll notice, uh, let's see, 235, you know, it's, uh, so I'm just looking at uh, our time and so forth. I'm not even at 60 miles an hour, which is the posted speed limit on the main lanes. I'm uh, still running at 55, very safely, easily, and comfortably able to jump over here and now slide into these U-turn lanes. You'll notice that I totally bypassed Shanefield Road, and I'm using this turnaround. By the way, when we do shift over again on, on uh, June 27th, if you've, hopefully you've got that uh, date circled on your calendar, when you shift over onto the frontage roads, you won't be turning left onto Shanefield at all. We'll be using this turnaround right here uh, to get to Shanefield, northbound 1604, turning left on Sh Shanefield, you'll be using this turnaround. Um, and uh, that, uh, that'll that be long term, so expect to see it that way for somewhere in the neighborhood of about a year. Um, again, that's, uh, you know, from June 27th until almost uh, until the end of the project completely. Now, we started this, this is, we've been at it for about one minute here. So, I mean, I know folks are saying, ah, oh, but that's going to take me so much more time to turn left. Um, I'm looking over at Shanefield Drive, and the main lane traffic on 604 still has green. So, we haven't missed any green arrows at this point. In fact, we're about to get our green arrow and show you something really neat. Okay, make sure traffic is stopping for us, and then we're going to keep on, we're going to get out here. And uh, still main lane traffic has the green. I am still less than two minutes. And if I was turning left onto Shanefield, or that's what I was trying to get onto, is to get onto Shanefield, northbound 1604, uh, instead of using that left turn lane and jump over, I am exactly two minutes at this point, 
and I could already just go ahead and, and turn right in there. So that's what we want you doing, is to use that turnaround if you're coming from Calabra. So please try and uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, just looking at the future southbound frontage road right here. This is just south of Calabria going through these neighborhoods. You can see where a bulk of our work is left. We have curb on the right-hand side of this road with sidewalk, uh, and uh, we have um, some asphalt work left to do. What what The surface that I'm on right here and right now um, is pretty much what we're going to be driving on uh, when we do this traffic shift. Uh, of course, you know, this surface that we'll have for about a year while we're over on traffic shift is not final surface. Um, that final surface won't come uh, until the very end of the job, but it's going to be uh, all but the last two inches of that final surface. And you can see, as I'm going to creep up here inside the work zone a little bit, um, you can see that, yeah, we have this asphalt coming right up here, um, <clears throat> leading up to uh, uh, where this uh, new gym, gym is at and, and the country home. Uh, I think this road here is Oscar Wilde Place. Uh, so leading up to Oscar Wilde Place, we've got all this stuff going on and everything. But then uh, you can see where that, uh, that white pickup truck is at um, and beyond that we haven't got asphalt down there and we're not ready for it yet. The key uh, for folks watching at home uh, to know, hey, when are we going to get asphalt is when you see uh, it, what looks like black spray paint. It's kind of like black tar or whatever. Um, when you see that, uh, that, it's called seal coat. You see that go down, then you know that the asphalt trucks are right behind it and uh, getting ready to come in. In fact, this area's already been seal coated right here. You can see on the left side, I'm not driving on it, or on the right side, I'm not driving on it. But this area right here has been seal coated, and then a nice uh, little layer of gravel on top of it. This is ready for asphalt. Um, asphalt's going to be coming soon, uh, and then uh, you'll see that 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 little layer of gravel stops right here. Seal coat continues. Uh, well. Um, the, the second layer of seal coats on here. So this area right here is ready for asphalt. Asphalt just hasn't quite gotten this far yet, but uh, it's coming uh, and that's a major thing to happen. And right behind the asphalt is gonna be our, uh, our concrete crews as we get in and get curb and sidewalk and everything else set up right through here. Um, one thing to note, this big tree, this oak tree, uh, some people have asked, uh, this is what we call a legacy tree. It's not going anywhere. So uh, expect to see that and keep that, and that'll be a part of everybody's daily drive along 1604 in this corridor uh, for as long as it, uh, as it stays. So we're not going to be pushing it down at any time soon, so uh, hopefully nobody else does. And just a few minutes ago, we looked at that uh, northbound turnaround. Uh, in fact, it's right uh, over there, that northbound turnaround that's uh, on 1604 to get you to Shanefield. And this is what it's going to look like right here. This is where it'll be here on the uh, frontage road side. You can see that we've got uh, asphalt here on the left side already kind of laid to show you where the turnaround's at. Um, and then over here on the right side, and I'll get up close to it so we're not zooming in, but uh, you can see that we've got uh, traffic signals already posted over here for uh, uh, traffic coming uh, well from the other side if need be and so forth uh, as we'll have turnarounds here uh, as well actually uh, if you're headed southbound 1604 headed to New Gilbo uh, I believe this is where you're going to be at uh, to do that uh, you're going to turn around to get to New Gilbo right here but at any rate uh, this is where the turnarounds uh, are at right now um, this is uh, you know this will be uh, the where the turnaround is at uh, for oh somewhere in the ballpark of uh, a year so uh, if, again we're not going to have any left turns when we move over into uh, the the new configuration moving the traffic over onto the frontage roads it's just going to be using turnarounds and so forth and this is where that one uh, this is where one set of turnarounds is going to be in northbound 1604 to Shanefield or southbound 1604 to New Gilbo this will be uh, where your turnaround is at so let's go up and take another look at some of the other stuff we've already covered pretty much everything northbound 1604 to uh, uh, from Calabria to Shanefield. So let's look at some other stuff. Uh, you can see that uh, this frontage road area here uh, approaching Holotus Creek looks uh, pretty clean. 
but there is a lot of work being done uh, directly behind us, predominantly on the drain structures. Once those drain structures are in, they get in and get the roadbed and, and start uh, paving and everything. We do have a lot of drain work around Shanefield and just north of Shanefield going in. So uh, that could take a little bit, but hopefully uh, the contractor's on pace and they, and they feel pretty confident they're going to be able to get everything shifted over onto this uh, May, this uh, frontage road again by June 27th. So uh, if you haven't already, circle your calendars, June 27th. This is another area of work. Lots of stuff going on right here. Uh, con the, the guardrail is being built uh, here on our left. You can see it right there. And then uh, just a lot of bridge work stuff. Just finishing touches really. Uh, the bulk of the bridge work is done right here in front of us. But this is northbound frontage road right here at Holotus Creek. Uh, the bridges on the main lanes have been there and, and are there, and, and we're not worrying about those. But right here, uh, this this bridge itself, this is, you know, well, this is going to be in use here uh, by the end of the month. And uh, we're, we're working feverishly to get that done. Still have some rail uh, left to put in. In fact, you can see uh, uh, the concrete barrier part to keep the car on the road is already there but you see that this uh, sidewalk is here remember this is a 45 mile hour road you know this is a frontage road so you see we have sidewalk here and see that steel uh, pipe looking stuff right there uh, on the right underneath the concrete uh, portion that's uh, it's kind of like a handrail sort of a thing it's aesthetic mostly but it's it's there <coughs> um, it, it can act as conduit for us and so forth so we can run wiring through it if we need to but uh, again, that, that all uh, uh, still needs to be put in place here on, the, uh, um, on this bridge. Uh, I think it, it doesn't go on top of, the bridge, of uh, that concrete rail. I think it bolts into the side right there. But uh, at any rate, it's still going in and, and uh, still busy uh, working on that and a number of other little things that we have going on right here. But uh, at any rate, this is uh, another item of work that needs to be finished. Uh, before that June 27th date that you've got circled on your calendar. Uh, if you haven't heard yet by now, I uh, hope you get that uh, date kind of stuck in your mind. June 27th, that's uh, when Williams Brothers is looking to move traffic over onto uh, the frontage roads. Now, I, I want to look at something real quick right here. I almost drove too close to it for you to really even see, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit on it. But that's uh, this inlet, and you see that little tiny lip right there. That lip is, uh, you know, shows you where the final layer of, of concrete will be. Now, when you, we move traffic over on the frontage road, so that lip will still kind of exist. Um, and uh, we get a lot of calls when that kind of thing happens with people saying, well, you know, you did such a bad job paving the road and there's a lip and all that stuff. Well, we know that there's a lip. That's because this isn't the final surface of asphalt. We still have a final surface left to go when we're all said and done, uh, and that won't go in until the project is pretty much finished. It's the last thing we do is that final lift of asphalt and then paint the uh, final lines on the roadway. So that lip will be there for a while. Just be aware of it. Just please don't call me and tell me that it's there and that it annoys you because it's going to stay that way until we're ready for the project to be complete. Uh, curb and sidewalk work being done through here as well. Uh, that'll be ongoing until we're uh, ready to open up. All right, this is the northbound frontage road uh, right here before New Gilbo. You see that sign there on your left uh, says New Gilbo Road. Uh, that's uh, kind of a temporary sign right there. But anyway, I wanted to show you this just so it kind of shows you what uh, a lot of this is going to look like in terms of how many lanes we'll have out here. Uh, the frontage roads, for the most part, will have two lanes in each direction. There will be some areas where you have three, and uh, that's typically going to be right here near the intersections. Uh, right here in New Gilbo, you can see on the right-hand side where the road kind of flares out to the right a little bit to allow for a right-hand turn lane. And that's, that's something that you can typically expect to see uh, when we move this shift over. Now, there are going to be some areas in the final product that we have a third lane called an auxiliary lane on the far left side. What that is is that's a lane for the exiting traffic and the, enter, uh, the traffic exiting the highway and the traffic entering the highway to kind of use to merge on the frontage road. Now, uh, it's intended, it actually gives a, a pretty decent amount of space so that everybody isn't trying to exit and ed enter and merge right immediately where that uh, entrance or that exit ramp is at. 
uh, but it actually gives you a ways to do what's called a zipper weave. And I'm going to use my fingers here in front of the camera to show you that really a zipper weave is when traffic does this. So it looks just like a zipper on your uh, on your jacket or on your on the fly of your pants or whatever. That zipper weave, so that traffic can come in and kind of merge and uh, mesh like that. It's uh, when we when you have uh, most of our uh, of our um, uh, exits and entrance ramps actually function like that. Certainly the, our clover leaves are supposed to function like that. So you don't have people stopping at the top of a ramp or something and creating uh, uh, problems for us, uh, safety hazards. You're supposed to be using that zipper weave. So there will be an auxiliary lane from, t from place to place. Example is, uh, well, an area that we went through, I uh, didn't show you on camera, but, uh, you know, we went through there uh, for a northbound frontage road between uh, Calabria and Shanefield will have that. But expect to see that in some areas. But for the most part, you're getting two lanes in each direction on the frontage road. It is 45 miles per hour or 40 miles per hour. No, you know, so stick to that. Uh, we will have SAPD and Bear County uh, constables and sheriffs out here uh, just to kind of monitor and, and remind folks that the speed limit is not 60 miles an hour, but it's 40, 45. This is a con an active construction zone. Uh, so uh, traffic fines double, and it's not something you can get out of through a traffic safety class either. So um, just know that uh, that, that is the case, and that's going to be an, uh, necessary to have people traveling at that 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, uh, in order to maintain the safety of this roadway. So uh, we're going to have people turning on and off uh, into businesses and, and side roads pretty frequently. So uh, if you're trying to get through here at 65 miles an hour, then, uh, well, to be quite frank, you're, you're part of the safety problem there, and we need to make sure that we're following uh, the posted uh, speed limits when we move over onto these uh, frontage roads. So uh, let's take a look over at Braun Road and, and uh, had a question up on Braun Road I want to address uh, a little bit more in detail, and then we'll wrap up for the day. All right, we're here on Braun Road. I'm facing east, so that's uh, right behind me is where the churches are at and so forth and outside the loop. And, of course, you can see right above us uh, is uh, the, those are the beams for uh, what will be the, the northbound main lanes of 1604 over Braun Road. And uh, a big question has been asked about why can't we make that center lane uh, a left or through lane like an optional, excuse me, an optional lane or even a dual left. So right now the traffic configuration here from left to right is left only, through only, through only. And uh, the final configuration is going to be left only, optional left or straight, and then straight or through only. That's final. So a question comes through, and, and I know that we addressed it in our mailbag uh, on uh, the blog, uh, text.sanantonio.blogspot.com, uh, recently and, and said that we would ask. Well, we asked, and here's the reason. Right now, if you look right at the way that those signals are operating, you have that left uh, arrow is flashing yellow, which means that you have oncoming traffic coming at you, uh, and then you have two green balls. Well, the left arrow, the l flashing um, yellow arrow, uh, means that you yield uh, f to oncoming traffic. If we were to make that center lane right there an optional lane, you would essentially have uh, traffic stopped at that location on a green arrow, just flat stopped. Now we got somebody right there that's making an illegal left turn, and uh, well, I hope the police department doesn't look at these. Anyway, so you have a uh, you have that that traffic is stopped uh, for a time, and and then you create a problem where that center lane would actually end up piling up, and you don't have through traffic uh, going on right there. This is an issue that we've discussed at length with uh, the city engineers who actually control the flow of traffic at our traffic signals across the city, including on TxDOT roads in many locations. And uh, the city engineers and our engineers take a look at this. And until we have the main lanes built and traffic flowing through uh, over on top of us, we can't really change the, the, sig the way the signal phasing works. Uh, what I mean by that is we can't eliminate that cross-traffic conflict where you have green for westbound, only and then green for eastbound only uh, and then, and so forth. When this is all done, the way it'll work is the northbound frontage road will be green, and then everybody else is kind of red, and then you'll have the uh, um, the westbound uh, Braun Road will have green, and everybody else will be red, and then southbound frontage road will be green, and everybody else will be red, and then 
uh, westbound Braun Road will be green and everybody else will be red. And so it just kind of everybody gets a turn, sort of, uh, so to speak. But the through lanes, the main traffic generator here is the 1604 through lanes, and, uh, and they'll be skipping the intersection altogether. They won't be here. Uh, they'll be over top of us. Um, until we get that, uh, those through lanes over top of us, that main traffic generator, we can't do that thing where everybody gets a turn, so to speak. Uh, in fact, you see that that green time where everybody gets their turn on green, so to speak, uh, you know, on this uh, area uh, is limited to about 5 to 10 seconds is all you have. And that's optimized. That I, I know that it doesn't feel that way. And a lot of people complain about that, but that is optimized. And that's a decision that's made uh, between our traffic engineers as we consult with uh, the traffic engineers with the city of San Antonio, who again, they're the ones that uh, are ultimately responsible for maintaining the signal timing and uh, traffic operations for, uh, for all the signals throughout the city. So that answers that question. Um, and uh, I, I think that's about all we really had to look at along here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Again, this is TxDOT Public Information Officer Josh Donay here in San Antonio, Texas, uh, looking at Loop 1604 on the northwest side of town. Loop 1604 Northwest is what we call this project uh, between Bandera Road and Calabria Road on the northwest side of San Antonio. And as you're driving around, just make sure that uh, you, uh, you be safe and uh, drive smart. So thanks for riding along with me, everybody.